Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem A6 from 1999 Putnam Math Competition. So this is a problem about a sequence that is given by a recursion, a1 equals 1, a2 equals 2, a3 equals 24, and an is this complicated recursion. And we want to show that an is an integer multiple of n. So I'll go over the process by which I obtain the solution to this problem. The first thing that I do if I see a problem involving sequences if, is I find the first few terms of the sequence and then I see um, what I can do. The next thing is that since this sequence is given by a recursion, induction is typically a good approach to the problem. So these are a few uh, ideas that I have. The next thing is if you're trying to show that a sequence is um, recursively defined, that is recursively defined is uh, an integer sequence, you'd probably want to, you, you probably want to come up with a different recursion that makes it clear that every sequence would be, um, would be an integer. For example, if you can turn this one into a n equals 7 a n minus 1 minus 3 a n a n minus 2, something like that, then it becomes easy to see that the sequence is uh, recurs uh, is uh, an integer. Of course, this is not going to be true. Okay, so that, let's just start from the first thing. The first thing is we're going to find the terms of the sequence. So let's find a4. a4 is 6 times the previous term squared, which is 24 squared times 1 minus 8 times 24 times 2 squared divided by 2 times 1. So I plugged in n equals 4 and that's what I got. So we're going to sim simplify here. We get 3 here and we get one of these 2's that's going to go away. So both of these two terms have 24 in common and there's also an 8 that we can factor. So from the first term we factor the 24 and an 8 so we're left with 9 and from the second term we factor 24 and 8 so we're left with 2. So we get 24 times 8 times 6. 7. Okay, initially when I looked at these numbers, I realized that this is 1 factorial, this is 2 factorial, and this is 4 factorial. So potentially the next one could be maybe 8 factorial. Of course, that's not the case because this 24 times 8 times 7 doesn't even have a factor of 5. Okay, let's find one more term and see what we get. So the recursion is 6 times the previous term squared, so 24 squared times 8 squared times 7 squared, and I'm not going to do the calculations because there's really no point in doing so. Times 2 minus 8 times 24 times 8 times 7 times 24 squared divided by 24 times 2. So let's simplify and see what we get. So some things cancel here, 24 cancels here, 2 cancels here, so this 24 cancels and this one becomes 4. Now, both terms have 24 in common, there's also an 8 and there's also a 7. Let's simplify this, let's factor this and see what we get. There are other common terms, but we'll take care of those later. So we get this from the first term, minus from the second term gets uh, 4 times 24. Now this guy is 48 and this guy is 48 times 2. We can in fact factor a 48. So we get 24, 8, 7, 48. And what is left is 7 minus 2. So this would be 24 times 8 times 7 times um, 48 and then times 5. Okay, let's summarize what we got. We have a1 equals 1, a2 equals 2, a3 equals 24, a4 equals 24 times 8 times 7, and a5 equals 24 times 8 times 7 times 48 times 5. Okay, so unfortunately this gets much more complicated as you proceed with the future terms. So let's see if we can see any pattern at this point. I don't really see a pattern in evaluation of this sequence, but I do notice a couple of things. First of all, all of these are integers as we were promised. And second of all, I notice that every term divides the next term. So 1 divides 2 divides 24 divides 24 times 8 times 7, and that divides 24 times 8 times 7 times 48 times 5. Okay, so that's interesting. So that's one thing that I noticed. 
The other thing is, if I look at the recursion, I can rewrite the recursion this way. A n, a n minus 2, a n minus 3 is equal to 6, a n minus 1 squared times a n minus 3. I believe that's what it was. Minus 8, a n minus 1, a n minus uh, 2 squared. I believe that's what it was. Now, I noticed that both of these two sides are in fact cubic. So they are all a uh, product of three terms of the sequence. And also by the observation that I have here, putting those two things together, maybe we can find, modify the recursion in terms of the ratio of each two consecutive terms. So that was the, uh, that was the motivation for a new sequence. So let's take the sequence of ratios of these. And if I can show that this sequence is an integer, and of course, a n would automatically be an integer. So can I find a recursion for this? Let's do that. Now, I would like to write down a n over a n minus 1, extract that from the uh, given recursion. So in order to do that, we will divide both sides by a n minus 1, so that I get a n over a n minus 1, a n minus 2, and a n minus 3, so that we can get rid of those two terms. So we get 6 a n minus 1 squared a n minus 3 divided by a n minus 1, a n minus 2, a n minus 3 minus 8 a n minus 1, a n minus 2 squared divided by a n minus 1, a n minus 2, a n minus 3. So let's see what we get. Well, there's some cancellation here. An minus 2 cancels, an minus 3 cancels, an minus 1 here cancels, an minus 3 cancels, an minus 1 cancels, and an minus 2 also cancels. So this is going to become kind of a, a, a much uh, simpler recursion to work with. So this gives us bn, an minus, or an over an minus 1 is bn equals. Fortunately, the other side is also going to be the ratio. So 6 times bn minus 1 minus 8 times b n minus 2. So this is amazing because we were able to find a recursion for b n. And of course, I know b2, I, I don't have b1, I don't have a0, is 2. And b3 is going to be 12. It's 24 over 2. So it's 12. Now, by induction, clearly b n is an integer. So by induction, bn is in fact an integer. But we haven't shown a n is an integer. How do we do that? Well, we can again, since bn is equal to a n over a n minus 1, is an integer, and a1 is an integer, again by induction, we can deduce that a n is also an integer. Okay. But that's not, that's not all we needed. If you go back and look at the problem, they said a n is an integer multiple of n. So we also need to show a n is an integer multiple of n. Now, that was the part that um, um, it was a little bit challenging to kind of figure out what to do. But if you look back at this recursion, it's not very difficult to re solve these uh, recursions. And I have a video on that. I'm going to put the uh, video on the post description of this um, video. And it's also going to be on the upper right corner of this video. So you can click on that and learn how to solve these recursions. So the way we solve these recursions, so we have bn equals 6bn minus 1 minus 8bn minus 2 is by writing down the characteristic polynomial. So it's r squared minus 6r plus 8 equals 0. Solving this, we get r equals 2 and 4. And that tells us that bn is equal to something times uh, r to the n, which is 2 to the n, plus something times 4 to the n. And of course, I also know b2. Um, b2 is 2. It's 2 over 1, which is 2. And b3 is 12. So we'll go ahead and evaluate alpha and beta. So when we plug in 2, we get 4 alpha plus 16 beta, that is equal to 2. And when I plug in 3, I would get 8 alpha plus 64 beta equals 12. So let's simplify this. 
we get 2 alpha plus 8 beta equals 1. And this would give us, if we divide both sides by 4, we get 2 alpha plus 16 beta equals 3. So subtracting these, we get um, we get 8 beta equals 2. So beta is going to be a quarter. So that's uh, beta. And alpha are, is obtained from 2 alpha plus 8 times a quarter equals 1. So that tells us 2 alpha plus 2 equals 1. So that gives us alpha equals negative 1 half. So this means bn is equal to negative 1 half times 2 to the n plus a quarter times 4 to the n. So that means a n over a n minus 1, the ratio is in fact 4 to the n minus 1 minus 2 to the n minus 1 for all n starting from 2. Okay, so what does that mean? It means a n over a n minus 1 uh, multiplied by a n minus 1 over a n minus 2 multiplied by a3 over a2 multiplied by a2 over a1 is going to be this product is of course a n because they telescope and a1 is 1 but it's also equal to the product of 2 to the power of k minus 1 or rather 4 to the power of k minus 1 minus 2 to the power of k minus 1 and that's k ranges from uh, 1 to n, or rather 2 to n. Okay, so this is the formula for a n. So what we just showed is that a n is in fact just that um, expression. So now we need to show that n divides that expression. Well, how do we figure out what are the powers of a number mod n? Well, one way would be to use Euler's uh, totion function. So Euler's totion function tells us that a to the power of phi of n is congruent to 1 mod n if a and n are relatively prime. So in this case, if n is odd, then I could say, well, 4 to the phi of n and 2 to the phi of n are both 1 mod n. So we know that phi of n is less than n. Of course, that means that n divides uh, divides a sub n because phi of n is, of course, less than n. So for every n that is odd, we do have the um, divisibility. Now, what about if n is even? So if n is even, let's write it down as 2 to the L times m with L and m integers and m odd. If that's the case, then here's what we can say. We know that m divides 4 to the phi of m minus 2 to the phi of m. And that's why m divides a n. But of course, 2 to the l, since l is less than n, so that means 2 to the l divides 4 to the n minus 1 minus 2 to the power of n minus 1. It divides one of those terms. So from these two, we can deduce that, which divides a n. We can deduce that m times 2 to the power of l divides a n, which means n divides a n. And that brings you to the end of this video. I will see you in the next video.